Warm welcome to today's talk, Saturday the 26th of November. We're going to be looking at the bivalent rollout in the United States and the evidence uh, for that. But basically, quite a lot of people are optimistic that there's going to be less COVID this winter than there was last winter with the Omicron. One of the reasons for this is that the Omicron has got into millions of people's mucous membranes and has generated mucosal compartment immunity which is going to be very protective. We've got antibodies now in our mucus as a result of natural uh, infection. But the official bodies are also still advocating vaccination. So let's look at that now. Now, Dr. Fauci is retiring in December. And of course, we wish him a long and happy uh, retirement. And you can leave comments on whether you think that's well-deserved uh, or, or not. Um, but we do certainly do hope he has a good retirement. New York Times, uh, Washington Post. So this is Dr. Fauci. Combination of infections and vaccines, enough community protection that we're not going to see a repeat of what we saw last year. So this is pretty promising. And um, we, we agree fully with this, largely because of the mucosal compartment immunity, I would say. But whatever causes that, causes that immunity to develop, we've got more immunity than last year, which is pretty, uh, pretty good news. Talking about the bivalent effectiveness, Dr. Fauci says it's clear now, despite initial, initial bits of confusion. So he is saying there was some initial confusion, but that's cleared up now. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's probably just as well because uh, the, the United States has spent five billion uh, to buy 171 million bivalent uh, boosters, which are Pfizer and Moderna. And as a Hobson's choice, you can have Pfizer or Moderna. No others are allowed or no others are being used in the States at the moment. Another White House uh, coordinator, Dr. Jha, still heavily promoting the vaccines. Very little talk. In fact, no talk from the White House about natural immunity, really, that I can see, unfortunately. Um, nothing I've seen in the subvariant makes me believe that we can't imagine our way through it effectively, especially if people step up and get vaccinated, according to Dr. Jha. But anyway, the, the point is, he's optimistic about the, uh, the forthcoming winter because so many more people are immune. And I actually agree with this, albeit for slightly different uh, reasons. Uh, and it seems the American people aren't overly convinced by these White House uh, statements because uh, only 11 percent of over fives have had one bivalent shot. Now, um, recently, they extended the bivalent booster to the over fives. Now, if you're a parent of a six-year-old, you may want to uh, consider the risk-benefit analysis of that. But the official government line in the States is to offer this to children over five. Healthy children over the age of five are being offered the vaccine in the United States. I'm simply reporting the fact. Now, um, this is the study from the CDC. Um, now, Again, difficult to read, uh, uh, effectiveness of bivalent mRNA vaccines in preventing symptomatic COVID-19 infection. Well, okay, yeah, it's all there. Symptomatic infection, to be quite honest, don't really care if I get a bit of a sniffle. I just don't want to get sick and go to hospital. But that's not mentioned. That's not mentioned in this, but never mind, we'll carry on. So uh, this is me writing it. This is the clinical trial. Previous work had only been based on antibodies, so... Remember, this whole program was rolled out. This whole bivalent program was rolled out in my country and in the United States and other countries without any clinical trial data. Some people might think that is astounding. Some people might think that is absolutely astonishing. This was done on the basis of antibody data, lab data. So this really is the clinical trial that's been done now. But it's not quite as good as a clinical trial as we'll see. Um, but there you go. People that uh, took part in this were part of the clinical trial, really. Benefits are mentioned, adverse reactions are not. Now, even the original Pfizer and Moderna clinical trials uh, mentioned uh, adverse reactions. Uh, this report from the CDC doesn't. To be fair, the CDC does in other places, as we will uh, see in a minute. So adverse reactions are not reported. But we did report from VSAFE yesterday. Again, it's an official CDC site, so I'm allowed to say this. Fatigue and all of these side effects were more common in younger people than older people. <clears throat> so fatigue, headache, uh, muscle pain, fever was all reported uh, by these quite large percentages. Inability to carry out daily activity, 
10.6% uh, in those aged over 65, but nearly 20%, 19.8% in the 18 to 49s. So that is mentioned, to be fair, as a result of the V-safe information. But getting back to the original paper that we're talking about now from the CDC, bivalent boosters provide a significant, significant additional protection against symptomatic SARS coronavirus 2 infection. Not really the point I wouldn't have thought. Now, again, relative vaccine effectiveness, and they've even made up a, a little thing for it here, RVE, of a bivalent dose compared with that of two monovalent, the old type vaccines, OK, they're saying that it was 30 percent. Now it's 56 percent in 48 to 49 year olds. Um, don't really think that's too relevant, really. Firstly, for two reasons. First is that we know the immunity wanes. So a new vaccine is bound to give some antibody effect. And secondly, it's, it's a relative risk. Why are you comparing the efficacy of the new vaccines to the efficacy of the old vaccines? It seems a rather strange comparison to make to me because it is very much a relative risk. And they actually say this. This is direct from their site with relative benefits increasing with time. They actually say it's relative. In other words, of course, we know that if it's a longer time since someone had their earlier vaccine, their antibodies are going to be boosted more with short term immunity being generated by a more recent vaccine. Nothing surprising in that at all really so exactly what you would have expected uh, and they, they they say up to date is staying up to date is critical is what they report on their site based on a fairly large study thirty-five thousand tests so it's a very, based on a fairly large study but it's only showing what it's showing it's not showing severe hospitalizations and deaths and it is not showing uh, adverse reactions and it's a relative risk given the absolute risk is not given so they're saying these are a bit better than the old ones. But of course, the old ones were longer ago. So pretty disappointing study, really, from the CDC. What about protection from severe disease? Well, others have chimed in on this, of course. Uh, they've realised this. Paul Offit, who we've talked about before, vaccine specialist. Uh, the only reasonable goal is to prevent serious illness, of course. Uh, we are still waiting for one shred of evidence that this bivalent vaccine or any bivalent is better than what we had. We're not, we haven't got the data of whether this is preventing serious illness. And that surely is the raison d'etre of the vaccine. It's telling us it prevents symptomatic disease, but we don't really care about that. We want to know if it protects serious illness against serious illness and death. And it's simply not telling us that, unfortunately. Uh, Paul Offit also says viruses continue to evolve and there should be a caution to tell what happens when you try to chase these variants. In other words, things are moving on now already. So as soon as you make a new vaccine against the new variant, almost by definition, it's already out of date. So it sort of questions the whole. Yeah, it's already out of date. <clears throat> uh, Celia Gounder. Uh, Kaiser Family Foundation. <coughs> it does not show bivalents are better than the original boosters, but she still advocates getting it. So I agree it's a time effect because we know the immunity wanes with time. That's quite inevitable. Vaccine immunity is relatively short lived against symptomatic disease, at least. Um, uh, Professor, um, Professor Dr. Dr. Shi, virologist, University of Texas Medical Branch. Difficult to measure how well the updated boosters were working because so many people had some immunity from early infections, stating the obvious uh, early infections were previous infections were in millions of people who were being assessed for the so-called uh, efficacy of, of the vaccine. So it's difficult to tease one apart from the, the other. And I don't think this study did tease one apart from the other. In fact, it didn't. Including people who were never vaccinated or boosted because, again, they've had natural uh, immunity. Uh, John P. Moore, virologist. Um, are the boosters working better than the original shots? Personally, I doubt there would have been much, if any, difference. But we may never know. So... Because the data differentiating from effects of previous vaccines, the effects of natural immunity and the effects of the new boosters aren't differentiated, we'll never know. So quite what are the CDC trying to show here, scientifically speaking, is a little difficult to uh, determine. 
Dr. Uh, Baricella, yeah, apologies. <laughs> Infectious Disease Physician, Massachusetts General Hospital. This winter should be better than last. So we, we, we agree with Dr. Robbie here. We're a more immune population, of course. Now, China, record infections. Now, China, the infection rate's running at tens of thousands. The last one I saw was about 36,000 cases per day because you cannot stop COVID. They are using dramatic lockdowns, mass testing, enforced mask wearing, closing people in factories, taking people to quarantine centres, carrying on with these draconian measures, and they are not stopping the virus. Uh, you can't stop the virus. It's endemic. Why are the Chinese still doing that? It really is. Um, it really is a form of mass insanity. But are we trying to stop the virus or be it in a different way? Because you can't stop the virus. It's endemic. So is this two forms of insanity? I couldn't possibly comment on that, but um, maybe it's time to uh, allow uh, natural immunity to come to the fore, the same as it is with all the other thousands of viruses that we live with? Why are we trying to enforce our economic, political, unscientific will on one of thousands of viruses? Maybe times have moved on since 2019 and 2020, the early days. So all those things going on in China, pretty dramatic things going on. No furlough scheme, so people are really, really suffering in China. And my heart really goes out to the ordinary people in China uh, absolutely terrifying, really, what's going on. Um, but they're trying to stop the virus in their own way. We're trying to stop it in our way, whereas I think uh, it's maybe time to let it stop in a natural way. Um, thank you for watching.